I've spoken a few times about the problems facing farmers and the imposition of the 20% inheritance tax on family farms worth over a million pounds, compounded by increased national insurance contributions and the problems of uh, the, the problems still th- uh, posed and threatened by Brexit. Uh, and this has triggered a wave of discontent among farmers who fear the policies will fracture generational legacies, endanger the food production ecosystem, and their planned strikes as a potent symbol of their frustration underscore a broader crisis where livelihoods and national food security are intertwined in an escalating conflict with political and fiscal policy. Farmers have been told that if they block roads with the tractors, they could face arrest. Uh, They've also been told told by Louise Haig that no one's going to worry about uh, uh, food shortages in the supermarkets because of farmers' strikes. Well, I remember the 1970s, and farmers were one of the groups of people that went on strike in the 1970s. So if this is Louise Louise Haig's indifference, uh, you know, she is warned by history. And and there's even greater uh, threats if she bothers to look across to the farmers' discontent in the 1970s in America. Farmers argue that their work is not akin to speculative land holding, but represents the backbone of UK agriculture, with 66% of farm businesses estimated by DEFRA to exceed the taxable threshold. This tax plan is not a distant threat, but a looming majority for a uh, looming reality for the majority. Joe Hilditch's assertion that farmers could feasibly disrupt food supplies hints at a latent power within the agricultural sector, a reminder that the stability of supermarket shelves and public peace is in many ways nurtured by those tilling the soil. And already there are stories of farmers who are killing themselves in desperation. Uh, I, I, I know of five. And this is appalling. Appalling. And not that surprising. Transport Secretary Louise Haig's... Um, Assurances, the, no, the, the agricultural secretary, uh, no, she's the transport secretary. The transport secretary, Louise Haig's assurances of DEFRA's preparedness for potential disruptions, um, however earnest, will be tested against the public sentiment and the logistical resilience, especially if the spectre of pandemic-like buying re-emerges. The government's narrative, supported by figures that purport minimal impact under 500 farms annually, has not convinced leaders like the National Farmers Union President Tom Bradshaw, who, um, while opposing drastic protest measures, emphasises that the profound anxiety rippling through rural communities is genuine. This isn't some sort of trumped-up fantasy. Uh, Labour's defence hinges on presenting the tax as fair and proportionate, with Prime Minister Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves defending the budget's broader vision. Yet Gareth Wynne-Jones, sharp rebuke of Starmer's avoidance at the Welsh Labour conference, paints a vivid picture of political discontent. The rhetorical focus on thresholds and fiscal boundaries, which includes a joint exemption limit of three million for spouses, clashes with the farmer's lived reality of fluctuating asset values, investment cycles and the fragile economies of sustainable farming. What remains pivotal is dialogue that balances financial reform with preserving agricultural continuity. Adrian Ramsey of the Green Party suggests refining the policy to distinguish genuine family farms from speculative interests. I think that would be a great idea, a potential path to mitigation. The stakes are not merely economic. They reflect the social fabric of rural Britain and the assurance of food security. Where the government contingency plans steeped in calculated confidence can offset the ramifications of protest remains to be seen. The unity, the resolve, the strategic acumen of both policymakers and farmers will determine if compromise can be struck before the threat becomes an unwelcome reality. The despair among farmers is palpable. This is a, this is a government that has ridden roughshod over entire communities. And I think the idea is to get in all the nastiness soon into the administration so it can then cruise its way through to a, to a next um, election victory. But farmers, among others, will not, will not forget what, uh, what has been done. They have a long memory. They think in cycles, yearly or, um, or, 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 or more than one yearly cycles, uh, a, a farmer is well well poised to remember the brutality 
of this attack, as indeed are educationalists. And the imposition of VAT, be in no doubt, is the breaking down of the barrier of taxing education. Today it's taxing private schools with this absurd class warfare fanfare. And people are congratulating the principal, and yet the people who are really class conscious are the people who are really benefiting from independent education and can afford it, they won't really be that hurt. The people who are being hurt are the people who have scrimped and saved because they can't afford to move house because they're not champagne socialists to a better catchment area where the schools are better because they can't pay, they, 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 they don't have a local labour peer friend who's going to give them access to, to his penthouse while, while their children study for their GCSEs. The, the, the concept of private education is significantly looser than Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer suggest. And this is uh, a vengeful, nasty um, budget to farmers, to educationalists, to pensioners, and all of this with knee-jerk and very speedy implementation all couched on the idea that the last government left a £22 billion black hole. And I don't hear, um, Bra it's not Braverman, Badenoch, saying that's untrue. Why not? Because I've read, I've read articles which suggest that it isn't true, that it's an exaggeration, that that £22 billion pound black hole wouldn't occur until 2028 at the earliest, and even then is unlikely. This is a self-righteous budget, and it's time it was called out. And to attack the farmers again and again and again, the last government, George Eustace, presided over a ridiculous European um, decision that got rid of the Eastern European um, casual workers visa. Then there was Brexit, and now there's this. We have seen farmers go out of business again and again and again because of mismanagement by arrogant and thoughtless urban governments, governments that don't understand the pressures on farming that can't take the long term view and it's time this was challenged